Welcome to another tutorial viewers and subscribers. Now for today's lesson, we'll be looking at flowchart. Now what is a flowchart? A flowchart is a pictorial method of representing an algorithm. So basically, it's a step-by-step -step approach to solving a task or a particular problem. Now there are several symbols that are used when using the flowchart method to solve an algorithm. Now you have the start or stop symbol. Now this symbol is used at the beginning and also at the end of your flowchart. You also have your input or output symbol and this represents data that will be required for calculations or so forth or data that will be printed from the result of a calculation to the user. You also have your processing symbol which represent processes, functions, or actions. So basically your calculations will be displayed here. You also have your decision symbol, which is a diamond. This represents branching point in an algorithm. You also have your flow lines. Now your flow lines are used to connect each of these symbols. And also your connector bar, which indicates that the algorithm continues on another page. Let's look at a basic question. Now, this question requires us to read the length and width of a rectangle and find its area. Now, now, let us look at the solution for this question. So, the first thing that we'll need to do is to prompt the user to enter the length and the width of the rectangle, followed by the program receiving the length and the width from the user and afterwards we'll have the calculation which is area equal to the length multiplied by the width and note for calculations in algorithm we do not use a normal multiplication sign that you will use in mathematics we use an asterisk for the multiplication sign and finally you'll print your results we should print the area and why we print the error? Because that variable is used to store the information from the calculation that was done in the processing symbol there, in the processing box. Now, let us look at another question. Now, this question requires us to write an algorithm that reads three numbers and find their total. So again, you know you have the start and the stop symbol. I didn't, I'm not quite sure if I mentioned in the previous question. But remember, your algorithm must have a start and a stop symbol. So the first thing that we'll do is to prompt the user to enter the two numbers. And afterwards, we'll introduce two variables that will represent these two numbers, which is num1 and num2 followed by the calculation. So now here we have sum equal to num1 plus 2. And remember, when we do this calculation, the results from adding these two variables or the content of these two variables will be stored in the variable sum. And finally, finally we'll, we will display the results and print the variable sum, which, as I mentioned before, would be storing the results from the calculation that was done. Thanks for watching and remember to like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for another lesson.